And if it isn't hard enough to pinch hit in a situation like that, how about doing it with a broken hand? Were you aware that your hand was broken when you had that at bat? Yeah, uh, it's just my thumb, but yeah, I knew it was uh, I knew it was broke. We got the X-rays in, and uh, you know, I just tried to uh, tried to play through it, and it uh, you know was able to get a good pitch and you know put a good swing on on that at bat. I got to think that that has got to be one of the funkiest injuries you've ever had considering how hard you play and diving and getting hit by pitches and everything because we watched that replay a few times and it seemed pretty harmless. Yeah uh, it, it, it definitely uh, stinks that it, it happened like that. Uh, like you said you know diving all over the place getting hit and you know I, uh, I break my thumb by tagging somebody it's a uh, it's pretty funny but you know it's just kind of how it goes and you just got to uh, get better and find a way to get back on the field again. Moose, the top hand I like to share with, with our audience and people that are learning how baseball is performed. You know, the top hand takes a lot of friction off when the when you don't square it upright. And did you feel that a few times the day after you played? Once you got back out there and, and took a, a few swings, did it bother you more when you swung the bat or when you caught a ball? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, there are some days where I could swing, and then there are other days where I could uh, I, I could catch. But uh, you know, during the games, it, it was hard for me to put my glove on and take it off. And uh, you know, after going through that for a couple of days, you know, I, it was kind of en enough was enough. And uh, like you said, top hand and hitting's a, a big deal. You know, that's where you get uh, get all the friction taken out of. And you know, I got jammed a couple of times, and that didn't feel good at all. Much has been said last year, as Uribe takes down and away, about. You spraying the ball to all fields and all the base hits that you got to left field. Something that's really stood out for me this year is how many home runs you've hit the center field. Is that just part of the the evolution of your swing the past two years? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, you know, I'm not trying to do anything different with my approach. Uh, I'm trying to stay uh, as consistent with that as possible. You know, uh, staying on it, going the other way. Uh, you know, trying to get my base hits to left field and. You know that's just kind of translating into uh, you know getting pitches out over the plate and hitting uh, hitting them out to center field, which is uh, you know which is always fun. We're looking at you can't see it now, but on the screen we're looking at your hits by direction. You have nine to left, eight to center, and eight to right. That's pretty good. Not that's, not too bad. <laughs> it makes it a little more difficult to pitch to. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get rid of that shift. You know. Hey, I, I want to ask you about that shift, and I'm I'm glad that I can ask you now, and not before a game when you're you know you you don't need a lot to have on your mind before a game. But it, it fascinates me how teams play you. Some teams still do the shift. Some do a little bit of the shift, and some teams, you know, will play you straight up because they recognize that you're hitting the ball to all fields. Do you spend any time trying to figure out why they do what they do? Um, not really. I just uh, when I go up for my first at bat, I look to see where everyone's going to going to be at, and that'll pretty much determine how the series is going to go. And you know, if everyone's shifting me over there, um, you know, I, I don't mind the shift anymore just because I can I can get my free hits over on the left side of the field now. You know, I can hit those ground balls at the shortstop that are that are hits and and then I'll, I'll catch a, a couple balls out in front and, you know, hit them in the gaps. But it's uh, it, it's kind of fun for me because I get to kind of play quarterback and see what uh, see what what the defense is in and, uh, you know, kind of go from there. And he was a pretty good high school quarterback, but <laughs> I, I, I could tell a few years ago when I first got here, he used to play catch with him, you know, with his football and before the BP, and, and he had some nice zings and good Z's on that on that ball. Moose, does that help strengthen your arm when you throw that football? Yeah, um, that's a that's one of my favorite things to do. You know, uh, going out there playing catch with the football, uh, kind of reliving the glory days back uh, back in the day. But that's actually something that me and uh, you know the trainers, KT, Nick, and uh, Blum. We're gonna start doing that to uh, make sure my arm stays in shape uh, while I'm while I'm hurting, and then uh, you know, kind of go from there. Now, this is a bit off topic, so since we brought it up, but you broke your leg in high school, right? Or were uh, you, would broke you would, my ankle. Your ankle. So, you, would you have played your senior year in football, or would you just decide when you're a senior you're going to be baseball only? Uh, I wanted I wanted to play. Uh, I wanted to come back and play. I broke it my first game of my junior year. Um, and I wanted to come back and play football that next year, but uh, I ended up not not being able to, and just stuck with baseball, and uh, ended up pretty good. Moose, when as a broadcaster, we spend a lot of time up here. We eat uh, dinner with different scouts and different people and organizations. And I've, I talked to a lot of scouts about you, and they tell me that you are the most improved major league player that they've seen in the last couple of years. Going into this year, both sides of the ball, Moose.
still got him. <laughs> How about that? They practiced that play in spring training. It went uh, through Escobar, but Colon was right there to back it up. Moose, you guys practice those? <laughs> uh, not really. You know, usually when I I make the uh, make the air, Esky's there to back me up and make the play. So. Somebody picked him up. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, all, all the times that we've picked, uh, he's yeah. picked us up. Right. You know, somebody somebody had to pick him yeah. up once. Well, this is a good time for a replay while we have you, Moose. Uh, we got a little bit of time, but but really, Moose, what a compliment when I heard that the scouts telling me you're the most improved player they've seen. I mean, you've already got some time in. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, not not that hard to believe though. You know, I uh, I struggled that one year when I hit 212 and got sent down and. You know, just being stubborn. Uh, you know, trying to still pull the ball and um, you know, getting in the cage uh, in, in spring training with Dale and you know, trying to figure out an approach that'll work uh, in, in the big leagues. It, it was tough, and you know, something I, I wanted to do because I love playing baseball. I love being a, a major leaguer, and uh, you know, just something that that had to be done. And I was uh, I was pretty pretty happy with the results and pretty happy with the approach that. Uh, that means they all kind of figured out. They're going to rule that Santana was safe, and now we'll wait on the scoring and see if they rule that a base hit or an error. Escobar did have a long way to go to get to that ball. And then there was that home run, Moose, in, in game one of the division series. And I, it's almost like that was wiping the slate clean on your career because that was. You know we talk about Salvi's base hit in the wild card game but that that changed the playoffs I felt for the team when you hit that home run in game one against the Angels. Yeah you know uh, that was that was a pretty cool moment for me you know to be back home and uh, you know do that in front of my my friends and my family and it was uh, definitely a special moment and pretty uh, pretty cool deal that he had him right there. Uh, yeah just it, it was it was it was cool and. Uh, you know that kind of that playoffs kind of started uh, started off uh, started off well and was able to carry that throughout uh, last year. First of five home runs in the postseason for the Royals, a Royals record. This is Jason Kipnis taking a strike. Moose, what's it all meant to you? In the last two seasons, top of the mountain, and you can't go any further except for that that one, you know, last inning there in 14. What's it what's the experience been like for you. It's been unbelievable. Um, you know you, you play this game to uh, to win a World Series and you know to have the opportunity in back to back years it's a. Uh, it, it's pretty pretty remarkable uh, especially with this this group of guys that we had the. You know the, the guys we came up with in this organization and. Being able to go uh, to the World Series two times and actually win it the uh, the second time. I mean, it, it was it was unbelievable, and it just makes you want want to get there again, get back into the postseason, and and uh, you know get that feeling again because the adrenaline's unbelievable when you're uh, when you're in the postseason. Moose, how important was it you guys winning in AAA Omaha together? I think uh, I think it was important winning everywhere. You know, um, you, you build that confidence. Uh, you know, we won in Low A, Double A. Um, we always had good teams coming up, but you know we built that confidence, and uh, you know with this, this group of guys that we have coming up, we were able to find find out ways to win with each other and find out how uh, everybody works. And you know, it was uh, it, it was definitely huge for us. And you know, you get a you get a taste of winning, and so that's all you really want. I remember when you got called up. Can you believe it was five years ago? No. Yeah. And all you talked about in the visiting dugout in Anaheim was just coming up. And helping the team win a championship when Eric Hosmer called up he said the same thing I've seen a lot of young guys come up through this organization over the years and I. And. Every single one of you guys to a person that's all you guys talked about when you got called up. Is just coming here to win a world championship and there you were last year. Yeah it was uh, that was our goal you know that was our goal when we got drafted I, I remember talking to Haas uh, after he got drafted and. You know it's kind of kind of the way Dayton. You know, taught us or told us. He he, he said we want to win a championship here in Kansas City, and you know, you guys are going to be the ones that are going to have to have to help. And you know, that's all we want to do. And you know, when you're playing this game, all you want to do is win. And getting to that postseason again, it was it, it, it's it's an unbelievable feeling. And uh, and winning the World Series, man, it's uh, words can't really describe it. Moose, every yard we go to, we hear moose calls. 
That's got to make you feel good. Yeah, I don't know if they're all moose calls. Some of them might be booze. No. Uh, <laughs> when it, how can they boo when you get a knock? That's true. Uh, I, I think it's funny, you know, because a lot of a lot of people always come to the games and they don't really, you know, know what's what's going on when I'm coming up to bat. And everyone always asks, like, man, why do they always boo you when you come to the plate? And I'm like, it's 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 all good, man. It, it, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, decide between the two or I don't I don't know which one's which so it's all good you know I was thinking the same thing when, when we're on the road and, and you know let's say Indians fans hear the moose call and Cleveland fans probably just jump in and start booing and exactly. then look, look to the guy next to him and say now why are we booing this guy <laughs> exactly yeah. that's exactly what happens why don't we like moose <laughs> yeah three balls and one strike on Lindor with Santana at first base and two down Now he will take a walk. So, because you've been around for a while now, and I know you want to be on the field, but uh, what kind of a role can you have in the dugout with your experience? And you got a young guy who's, who's out there playing your position. Um, you know, just uh, just to do whatever the guys need. Uh, you know, I'll run and go get the coffee. I'll get the seats. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll do all that good stuff. Um, Service. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, if uh, guys want me to go check out some uh, some at bats or pitches or whatnot. Uh, I'll, I'll go run upstairs and you know check that but you know Chesler's going to be fine over there he's a he's an incredible player and obviously you saw that diving play he made earlier uh, he, he's a special player and he's going to be uh, a real special player uh, in the years to come too and it's, it's fun to go out or fun to watch him play ball. You guys have created such an identity that when somebody comes in from another organization or comes up from the minor leagues you can identify right away is this a Royals type of a guy or not and he seems to be exactly what you guys are. Oh absolutely. Um, you know he plays the game hard. Uh, he has fun you know he's, he's more of a quiet uh, quiet kid but um, you know he plays the game hard and he has fun and that's that's pretty much what we're about over here. We we like to go out and you know have some fun and you know win some ball games and, and do whatever we can but it's always fun you know we get to play Major League Baseball and that's a it's a real dream come true. There was that play that he made to win the bottom of the second inning against Marlon Bird. One and one from Volquez to Michael Brantley. And now one ball and two strikes. Moose you had to know defending the, the world championship flag is a little different than the American League championship flag from last year. And the, the central here beefed up a little bit. It's going to be a, a battle, and huh? What you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, when you when you have that patch on your shoulder, uh, it says World Series champions. You know, it's uh, it's it's like a target. Everyone uh, everyone's coming to get you every single game, and you know, it's it, it's it's awesome. But at the end of the day, last year's over with, and this is a new year. So we got to go out there and you know find a way to get back to the postseason. You know, it's not going to be easy. A lot of great a lot of great teams in the central and. You know, throughout all of baseball, so it's uh, it's definitely gonna be a tough task. But you know, we got a great team, great group of guys, and just got to go out there and keep doing what we're doing. And we brought that up too. You know, you guys haven't hit your stride yet, but you're getting the best effort and concentration from every team you play because you guys are the measuring stick now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in in Major League Baseball, you know, and it's not it's not which team is the best. It's the team that plays the best that day. Come on, Lolo. He's there. Well, hey, thanks for your time, and we certainly don't want to avoid the obvious today on Mother's Day. We're really thinking about you and your uh, family, and really appreciate all the time you spent with I us. I appreciate that, guys. Thanks, and, uh, Moose. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Okay. All right.